What's going on everybody? I'm back with another video. This video is going to be looking at the Europa League final that Frankfurt ended up winning and beating Rangers in penalty kicks. But this is going to be looking at the tactics behind the match from both sides. And before we get into it, check out the OneFootball app. It's the best app out there for all things football. You get to stay up to date with the latest news, the biggest games, and the leagues all across the world. Now with the summer transfer window opening up, it's the perfect app to have to stay up to date with all the biggest news and headlines. Also going in the final days of every season around the world, or especially in Europe, it's a great app to stay up to date with multiple games at once. And stay up to date with the news around the biggest clubs. So it's the app I use, it's on your screen there. Check out the link in the description below. It's a free download and I highly recommend it. Also when you're in the description, check out both my books and check out Keyframe, it's how I'm making this video. Now let's get right into the tactics behind the match. So Frankfurt with nothing new in their game model and their approach to this match in the offensive phase they built with a back three that had a slightly lopsided approach with more emphasis towards the right hand side but then we would then go with a midfield four that consisted of two holding midfielders and two more advanced midfielders between the lines then higher up the field we would see the width and height being created by the wing backs and our sole striker so what would then happen was the fluidity from the double pivot and the occupation between the lines would often pose a few different avenues to then progress through against this Rangers 4-3-3 and they would then move into a more man oriented approach especially when they would go and press so Rangers especially throughout the first half they maintained a lot of control over this Frankfurt buildup and their 4-3-3 or 4-5-1 was able to cover the space between the lines so the Frankfurt attacking midfielders weren't able to influence the game very much and because of the central defenders not driving forward and attracting midfielders Frankfurt weren't able to exploit the space in the wide area either. Now we see the clear structure from Frankfurt in possession of the ball with their back three and their four man midfield. Now this is often the case throughout the match and this is one way Rangers were able to change their shape and drop a holding midfielder between central defenders to have a back five and go with a more man oriented approach. So what this enabled Rangers to do was match up wing backs with wing backs and have three central defenders able to jump to the space between the lines to mark the attacking midfielders and then have their eights pair up and match up against the double pivot. It caused a more natural press, allowed the players to use their cover shadows and decrease the distance from the front three to the central defenders and allowing and allow them to press more vertically often forcing Frankfurt into a deeper area. So when Rangers would build out of the back they would go with their goalkeeper splitting their central defenders as most teams do but then they would go with an asymmetric 4-3-3 so especially on the right hand side we would see more rotations with this number eight dropping deeper to then release the fullback and allowing the winger to invert between the lines. So the re right hand half space was a source of overload for Rangers and often allowed them to create players between the lines. Now Frankfurt's 5-2-3 was very spatially oriented and had an emphasis on using their cover shadow to block diagonal passes into the midfield trying to control the midfield three. The wing backs would have a differing height on who they would then jump to and how they could then press if the pass was played to the fullback and Frankfurt were able to isolate possession into the wide area they would do so by having strong diagonal compactness and preventing the midfield from influencing the match. Now Frankfurt when they would drop deeper into a 5-4-1 looked pretty secure even though the jumping of their defenders was crucial and could have potentially been exploited more. So we have our 5-4-1 and the two holding midfielders and wingers were very much oriented towards the holding midfielder of Rangers and the first line of buildup. So we would often see, as we see here, the wide midfielders oriented towards the two central defenders and potentially looking to jump, if not to the central defenders, to the fullbacks, creating either dual or single width in the wide areas. So then we would then have a 4-3-3 structure from Rangers that had good occupation between the lines almost at all times. 
So what this did was it provided occupation over these dangerous areas in the blind spot of the defenders. And probably the most often we see this is on this right hand side with the central striker drifting over the right half space and the winger inverting. So when the wing back would then go and jump to potentially go and press creating a vertical partnership, we would have space being exploited in behind. And as we see, the central defenders on the weak side often could be drawn towards the players between the lines and have to go and press an attacking midfielder, also creating gaps in their back line, which Rangers could have exploited more, in my opinion. So now we see how the Rangers buildup was using the full width provided by the fullbacks. And this was then due to the asymmetric midfield of Rangers with one of their eights dropping deeper in the right half space, allowing then the winger to invert and creating this overload. So then this is probably the most clear example we have of the 5-4-1 being influenced by the attacking play and rotations of Rangers. So then Rangers were able to create this space in behind the Frankfurt defense by inverting their winger, having the wing back then oriented towards the fullback and having the wide midfielder press into the first or second line in a more central position. So by going into this area, we see where the press is coming from and we have our central striker playing off the shoulder of the most central defender and being able to play in behind. So we have this broken back line and a very staggered shape from their back five, allowing for then space to be created and used in wide and deeper positions. This is all because of the good occupation they have between the lines, whether that's from wingers or attacking midfielders and the deeper width that Rangers often use in the wide areas to then attract play and pressure to go higher and in wider areas, creating natural space in behind. So now in our last picture here, we have the Frankfurt 5-2-3, and we can see how their lines would be flattened when they would then try and come out and press. We would have our back four, creating full width, often as a source of horizontal progression, forcing Frankfurt into a deeper area. Then we would have our midfield three, creating rotations and looking to get their wingers on the ball in narrow positions. But more often than not, this front four, when Rangers were able to become successful, is they could flatten this front three and expose the three versus two in midfield, forcing, as we saw in the last picture, one of the back five to jump and creating space in behind. And this is where we're going to wrap up the analysis. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.